Father, I thank you for this word. Lord, I pray for open ears to hear. Open up our spirits, Father God, to see and to hear what you have for us tonight, Father. Lord, I thank you for this word. Father, I pray for the Lord for utterance. I pray for boldness to speak your word tonight, Father. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and love. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Before I go into my message, there's something I need to share. Um, Yesterday, when I had my play time with Pastor. God spoke over the this church. And I was listening to the church. I can't believe that word. I just not. And it was just so amazing that when God spoke, it was in line with the teaching that I had prepared. So I know that it's from the throne. And it's for each and every one of us, including myself. Amen. Um, can you find the audio on here? So, this was yesterday. At around nine o'clock yesterday morning, we were praying, and as we were praying, God was speaking. Um, so, God spoke very strongly, and He asked, He's asking each and every one of us, Where is my word? Why is my word? Not on the inside of him. Why have you strayed from my word? Who has deceived you? Like Paul said to the Galatian church in Galatians 3 verse 1. Who has bewitched you? Oh, you foolish Galatians. That you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. God is saying, why have you allowed the enemy to enter? Why are you giving him place in your lives? Return to me and my word. Maintain what you have received from my servant in this house. I am not, am I not greater than all of them? Amen. Am I not greater than what you are facing right now? Amen. Am I not the one who can move mountains, who can change the season, who can calm the storms? Amen. Why don't you trust me? Why have you shifted your focus? Why have you allowed yourself to be distracted? Why are you allowing yourself to be distracted? So people, we need to change. This word came very strongly to me as we were praying. I shared it with Pastor and he told me, you go and share this with the church. And as a church, each and every one of us need to go back this evening. We need to go back to the Word. We need to go back to, to, into our prayer time, into our prayer closet. We need to spend time with God, not just doing all the talking, but allowing God to speak to each and every one of us. Amen. Remember, the times are getting we were told that this year is going to be a tough year. If you're not, if you don't remain connected, you are going to feel 
all these difficulties. You're going to go through these challenges. But we need to remember that God promised this church that it is our year for divine fulfillment. He's promised to protect us. He's promised to provide for us because we are his children. When we take our focus and try to do things on our own strength, we simply tell God that he's no longer our source. We are telling him that he's not able to do exceedingly abundantly above all as his word has promised us. People, we need to change. And if we don't, the enemy is going to destroy us and he's going to delay whatever God has for each and every one of us and for our families. Amen? Amen. So let us focus as, the, as there's a scripture, I think it's in Ephesians or Philippians, where Paul says, let us focus on the rock and let us run that race. Amen. 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 Knowing that God is on the inside of you. He's placed his spirit on the inside of you and I. And whatever we are facing, know that when, when you go through these tests and these trials, it's not because God doesn't like you. But not because God has something against you. No, that's to build you up. That's to strengthen you. Because he has to break down the self on the inside of you. You need to break. You need to be broken. You need to break the foolish man on the inside. Amen? So, that was the word from God for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. You can cut that thing now, it's fine. I want to send it to the rest of the church. <laughs> Amen. So today's teaching is on obedience. Amen. God gave me this word on Sunday already. Obedience. And Pastor Wells is still part of my message, but it's fine. We'll just recap what he has already spoken. <laughs> So this is not going to be the normal some that's going to make us feel uncomfortable. Mm. But that is God. Because He needs to discipline us at times to bring us back to Him. But remember, He doesn't discipline us because He, because he just wants to, wants to make us stronger. Amen. So it's not always going to be a feel-good message, but it's what is needed in the season for us as a church to progress, for us as a church to grow. Amen. 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 We, we know God is going to expand us. We know God has promised to grow this church. Amen. But God needs to work on each and every one of us first to grow us. Amen. Amen. So, like I said, like Pastor always says, it's going to put some holy cows. Amen. Amen. So, God is dealing with us in the season. He wants to correct us. That's why he says in Hebrews 12, verse 6. For the Lord, Hebrews 12, verse 6 says, For the Lord disciplines and corrects those whom he loves. And he punishes every son whom he receives and welcomes into his heart. So you see, God corrects us, but he corrects us in love. Amen. Amen. So, what is obedience? I know Pastor Wazi touched on it. What is obedience? But I'm just going to go with my notes. Obe- obedience is an act of obeying or submission. Amen? Amen? It's a behavior that is respectful and mindful of rules and rules. Amen? Amen. It's connected to trust and it's connected to respect. There's a biblical definition for for obedience. Now you see, in the Old Testament, this word signifies to hear or to listen. So it carries with it an ethical significance of hearing with reverence. Amen? Amen? It it also means some ordinating oneself or your own will 
under someone else's. Or the thing you heard and were told growing up, whatever you were told, the perception that you had on life or whatever. But you basically got to clear out yourself and put yourself under somebody else. Amen? Amen. So it defi- it's defined as dutiful or submissive compliance to the command of the person in authority. Amen. Amen? So the Greek word for obey is to trust. Amen? Amen. Amen. Biblical obedience means that you hear God's word and you have to go act accordingly. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is known as true obedience to God. That's when you hear what he says and you do. Amen. 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 So, before we can proceed on obedience, we need to look at disobedience and the dangers that we open ourselves to when we become disobedient. We are not doing what God says. Amen? Amen. So remember, when you were a child and you didn't listen to an instruction from your parents, mm. there was consequences. Amen. 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 When you refused, you saw your fa- the face of your parents not looking very pleased with you. Amen. 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 So when we refuse to listen or to obey God, and we determine to go our own way, and we want things to go our way, and we want to do things our own way, we can accept the same result. Because remember, in all of that, our own way, our own thing, it's me, me, me. But God comes in His Word and He tells us in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 10 to 11, He says, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 10 to 11, I'm reading at the Amplified, it says, Do not murmur in unwarranted discontent, as some of them did, and they were destroyed by the destroyer. So you see, when you start complaining, what happens? The destroyer steps in. Now these things happen to them as an example and a warning to you and I, to us. They were written out for our instruction to admonish us and to equip us upon whom the ends of the age have come. Amen? Amen. So, the first thing you're going to see in your life when you're in disobedience is confusion. There's five. I think there's five or six. The first one, the six, is confusion. So, we start to question the decision we made. We wonder, did you make the wrong choice? So look at this, if we look at the story of the Tower of Babel, how God brought confusion, the same thing will happen to you and I. When we make decisions and we exclude God, we don't go to God first and ask Him for approval. We just go and do our own thing. So we see not only were their plans frustrated, but God accomplished His will despite he still did what he had to do. And then he scattered them. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33 says the following. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. So no one thing. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33 says, For God is not a God of confusion, but a God of peace. Amen. So when you don't have peace, you know you're not in the will of God. Amen. You're not doing what God told you to do. Amen. Amen? When you become confused, know that God is not in it. Amen. The second one you're going to experience is conflict. Amen? Amen. You're going to experience conflict on the inside of you when the Holy Spirit gives you that uneasy feeling, that feeling of inadequacy. You start to doubt over that choice you made. 
That's the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4 verse 31. Ephesians 4 verse 31 says the following. It says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Amen? Amen. So, the third one that's going to cost you. It's always costly when we don't do the right thing. In the right time and in the right way. It's going to cost you something. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 You can write it down, you don't have to go there. says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? Amen? Amen. So that is the scripture to back up that it's going to cost you. Number four is a loss. You will experience some kind of loss in your life. In your life. That will either be an emotional loss, that will be a spiritual loss, or it will be a physical loss. Amen? Amen. Philippians 3 verse 8 says, Philippians 3 verse 8, it says, Indeed, I all, in, yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellent excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. Amen? Amen. So you see the danger. Number five is regret. Now there's an Afrikaans saying, what's that word for regret? Spirit. 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 They say, from after the wicked, the loved. So he chooses the best direction, the best time, and the best way. And if we choose to, to go in the opposite direction, we will experience regret. Amen. Not waiting for God's timing or delay doing it his way when he instructs us will cause us to miss his deep and best for us. Amen. We will suffer deep regret. Amen. Remember Jonah. Amen. Remember Jonah. Jonah 1 verse 3, we see that Jonah goes to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And then he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went down there because he wanted to get away from the presence of the Lord. God gave him an instruction. I need you to go and warn the Israelites, the Israeli army. And he didn't want to do that. And he paid a dear price. So, we will suffer the great. The next one we will suffer, the last one, is discipline. If you refuse to listen and obey God, you will discipline us. His goal for us is that we learn to trust Him. That's why Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Amen. Amen? Amen? If you look at Psalms 107 verse 17 says, Psalms 107 verse 17 says, Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, they were afflicted. So fools are, aff are afflicted because of disobedience. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
the Lord takes dis- disobedience in a very serious matter. He equates it, he puts it in the same basket, should I say, as rebellion. It's as good as being rebellious. As in suffering and ordination, as arrogance, as pride, divination, iniquity, idolatry. If you look at 1 Samuel 15, 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23, here we see Samuel and Saul. 1 Samuel 15, 23, 25, to 20, 22 to 23. It says, so Samuel said, has the Lord as great and delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice? As in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed them that of fat rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. So it is a witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you. That is what Samuel said to Saul. So God rejected him and he lost his kingship. So it shows that it's not. Disobedience says, Ah, so what? But now we see from the scripture, it's not a so what matter. It's a case of the Lord will understand. That's what we say. Ah, the Lord will understand. But it's not a case of the Lord will understand either. The Lord takes this very seriously. Just obedience is recorded as follows. I'll give you five things here. It's regarded, disobedience is a choice of your own will. It's a choice you make. Remember, God gives us choices every single day. We choose what we make. We choose if we're going to listen to the voice of God or we're going to listen to ourselves. That's why the first one is it's a choice of will. The second one is that's like God. It's like you put it in idol. You worship it in idol. It is arrogance, pride. Number four is it is the pursuit of fertility. Number five, when you disobey, you despise and regret. Not only God, but His word. It's like saying, no. I'm not going to believe what's in the Bible, but I'm going to listen to more. It's the same thing. You, you can't accept one thing on that piano. I mean, why did I say it's idolatry? Because it replaces God with you. Or the person, someone else, the people advising you. Look at Adam and Eve. They replaced God for a serpent. Ephesians 2 verse 2. And I'm reading out of the CEB the, um, translation. It says, You used to live like people of this world. You followed the rule of a destructive spiritual power. This is the spirit of obedience to God's will that is now at work in persons, in persons whose lives are characterized by disobedience. The next point. It replaces God's sovereign will and authority with your own. So you're saying, Lord, I'm not interested in your will. I'm going to do it my way. We all want to be friends and not, and we all want to do things our way. So this is forbidden. If you look at the very first commandment we were given in Exodus 20, verse 3. 
that says, you shall have no other God but God's performance. So the Lord warns us in Isaiah 42 verse 8, he says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will give to no other. No my praise to a carved image. Hebrews 5 verse 9 says the following. It says, and having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey. So we need to make sure God is the author of our eternal salvation. Amen. Amen. So obedience to God, to the Lord gives us the assurance of salvation. I had a look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. It says, by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and doesn't keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But if he keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. Amen. Amen. So, by this we know that we are in Him. Amen. 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 Another verse I want to read to you is John 3, verse 36. It says, John 3, 36 says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. Amen. But he who doesn't believe in the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Amen. So you see, God's wrath will abide on you, on you when you do when you disobedient. John 14 verse 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. So obedience to God says, I love you, Lord. Amen. Deuteronomy 10, 12 to 13 says, Now you, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, Amen. to walk in all his ways and to love him. To serve the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. And to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commands you today. It's for your own good. Amen. Amen. We see Jonah disobeyed God. He wasn't willing to go born with his radio arms. He ran away. But remember, he cannot run away from God. There's a scripture that David says in Psalms 139 verse 7. It says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I send you to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, but behold, you are there. Now, if we look at that, there's no way. We can run away from God. So Deuteronomy 28 verse 19 to 20, we see what God does to disobedience. Shoot, this is a no. Deuteronomy 28, 19 to 20. That says, Cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed will you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, rebuke, and all that you set your hand to do. Until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken. So, let us not be 
Moses and Aaron and said, Moses, Moses, they said, Remember in Numbers 20, where he struck the rod, the rock with a with the stop to produce water because the people were complaining. And this action that you did was in direct disobedience to what God directed him to do. Because remember when he didn't start the rock, what did you tell him to do then? He was saying, I can do this. I'm trusting in my own ability, in my own plan to get the water to my people. And the result of that was they didn't see the God's land. So it will cost you more. Mm. Amen? Amen. So disobedience is an ultraxon. Romans 5 verse 19 confirms that. It says, for as by one man's Disobedience, many will make sinners. So also by one man's obedience shall many be made righteous. When you are disobedient to God, you can't get sin. It proves your lack of faith in it. That's why Hebrews 3, the 16, Hebrews 3, the 16, says, for he having heard the doubt, indeed, was it not all came out of Egypt the Moses? Now with whom was he angry? Forty years. Was it not with the ones who sinned? Was corpse foul in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? but to those who did not obey. Amen. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. So Paul equates faith to obedience and unbelief to disobedience. We see that there's a scripture to back it up. It says in Romans 13 verse 1, it says that every soul be subject to governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authority that exists is appointed by God. Amen. Amen. So rebellion is to disobey authority. Mm. Authority, remember, is put in place. If you read Romans 13, verse 1, this who God puts in place. So it's established and put in place by God. So when you fight people in authority by rebelling or dishonoring them, or you disobey what they tell you, you disobey and disrespect God. You bring judgment to yourself. You bring God's punishment upon you. He sees it as you challenge him his divine authority. Mm. That is why Malachi 2 verse 2 says, if you will not hear, if you will not take it to heart and to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you. I will curse all your blessings. Yes, I cursed them already because you did not take it to heart. So people, God places in authority over us. The people God places in authority over us deserve honor and respect. They are not to be worshipped because they are not God. Remember they have been labored and they have been approved not by a man, not by themselves, but by God. So when you and I choose not to honor them, by addressing them in the office that God has called them and placed them into. You're not hurting them, but you're hurting God. And as a result, you can never receive from them. God cannot bless you through that person because you cut yourself off the minute you become 
familiar. If we, the perfect example of that is Jesus when he went to Nazareth. That's why it says in Mark 6, 4 to 5, in the book of Mark 6, where he, they said he couldn't do a lot of miracles because they still regarded him as the carpenter's boy. They didn't see him as the anointed son appointed by God. Mark 6, verse 4 to 5 says, Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, amongst his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. This is not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. And are not his sisters here with us. So they were offended at him. So in fact, let us address people correctly and with respect. And then, if you met the president, or you met a judge, you would address them as sir, mm. or your honor, mm. or honorable. Mm. So, let us all take into that. Let's look at the obedience, and what is tied to obedience. Go with me to Colossians 3 verse 20. Colossians 3 verse 20. It says, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to God. That's one verse. Deuteronomy 11, Deuteronomy 11, 26 to 28. This is what the Bible says about obedience. Deuteronomy 11, verse 26 to 28, it says, Behold, I sit before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey my commandments, the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today, and go after other gods, gods which you know. So you see, the Bible says this about obedience. You see, he's giving you a choice. You have a choice. Are you going to obey, which is carries a blessing, or are you going to disobey, which comes with a curse? Okay. Romans 6, verse 16 says, You are slave to the one you obey. So whether you are slave to sin, which leads to death, or slave to obedience, which, which leads to righteousness. So the verse actually reads as follows. It says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourself, yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether it is sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. So whatever you listen to, that's the one you make your slave yourself a slave to. 1 Samuel 15 verse 22 says, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen? Amen. So, obedience, if you say, I will partially obey, or I can wait, you delay your obedience, God says it is disobedience. And there's a scripture for that. It's in Psalms 119, verse 60. It says, I made haste and I did not delay to keep your commandments. So we see the Bible is full of instructions. That is why the commands of, the, of God. And he expects each one of us to obey the commands immediately. So imagine your parent asking you to do something. Just imagine for a second. 
And you tell them, okay, you better think about it. <laughs> I will think about it. <laughs> and you're going to do that. I will think about it. What do you think their response will be? <laughs> this is the exact thing we do to God all the time. The excuses we use when we give him. He says, I want you to do something. Here are some of the excuses we give. We will say, I will think about it. We will say, you know, I'm so busy. I don't know. It's not convenient right now. I was guilty of that. I'm so busy. I've got things to do. I have a job, you know. I've got a house to see to. I have responsibilities. I have a family, I have people, I have animals to take care of. That's what we say, that's what all of us say. I can't do it right now. So these are the excuses we give God. And this is the same thing. This is exactly the same thing that as a child says to the parents, well, think about it. These are the exact same things we are doing to the one who created us. To the one who's very great, is on the inside of us, who is keeping us alive at this present time. This is the one who healed us. He's the one who delivered you. He's the one that protected you and your family from dangerous situations, even the stuff you don't know about. He's the one that gave you a job. He's the one that makes sure you have a roof over your head. He's the one that blesses you. He's the one that listens to every time you pray, you run to him, pray, you want his help. He is there. Amen. 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 This is the type of demand we place on God. But when God gives us an instruction, we come with excuses. When we pray, we expect God to answer us right now. Oh, yeah. We expect God to heal us right now. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 And God is faithful. He'll do that. But when he comes back and he says, I want you to do that. Can you go and go and give something to that person? Can you go and give an encouraging word? And we say, God, I'm too busy. I don't have time. That is disobedience. And if you know kids, and you know that they have a delay in listening and doing what you're asking them, This is the same as we not listening and doing what God is telling us to do. That's why I refer to that Psalm 119, verse 60 says, I made haste and I did not do to keep your commandments. We need to take on that first and say, Lord, we will not make, we will not, we will hasten, we will not delay, we will not look for an excuse anymore. We will obey when you say, we must do. Amen. So the question is that I want to relate to you. What has God told you to do? What has God asked you to do? Have you done it? And if not, why? What are we waiting for? So, go ahead and do what you told you to do. Remember that obedience is an act of faith. Disobedience, like I said, disobedience is as, 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 as a result of unbelief. Obedience is a choice between my limited knowledge and God's unlimited knowledge, power and resources. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Obedience is not perfection. Not just the sacrifice. But it's what God requires of us. That's why Jeremiah 17, 23 says, But this is what I commanded in saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. You shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I've commanded you, that it may be well worth you. Hallelujah. So choosing obedience, 
does not guarantee you an easy life. No. It's the assurance of having God's help at hand in the times when you need it. Obedience is the highest form of worship that we can offer God. It's by being obedient. Psalms 119 verse 35 says, Make me walk in the paths of your commandments, for I delight in it. So too, we need to develop a spiritual strength. We need to do our part. If we are not willing to work and to be obedient, we shouldn't be expecting miracles from God. So, in my experience, miracles are found through obedience and kingdom work. Your faith is only as real when there is an obedience attached to it. Without it, your faith becomes useless. Faith becomes faith when you act in obedience. Amen? Only obedience will lead you to where God wants you or purpose for you to be. Remember that you are saved by faith. But we are all called to be obedient. We are all called into obedience. God's blessing is waiting for each and every one of us on the other side of our obedience. So in closing, Ezekiel 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36 verse 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will take out the heart of stone and I will put in you the heart of flesh and give you a heart of flesh, as what it says. So we don't obey God's command because we are forced to, because we have to. No. The reason why you and I are going to obey is because he put that new heart on the inside of you. Amen. Amen? Amen. So when he puts that new heart on the inside of you, that heart is going to desire to do God's work. And if that desire is not there, then you need to relook at your relationship with God. That's why Psalm 128 verse 1 says, Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and who walks in his ways. God calls you blessed. We need to walk in his ways. We need to walk when he says go, we need to go. We shouldn't even stand still. We shouldn't even think about it. We should go. Spiritual maturity is tied to obedience, not to time and not to our old we are. Because remember in this world, we are a certain age, but spiritually we are a different age like we always thought in this church. Your faith and obedience are inseparable. You cannot say you have faith, but you don't have obedience. Your obedience is evidence of true faith in God. If you claim to love God, then obedience will not be a burden, but a delight. That's why Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. So God is telling us to obey. Deuteronomy 13 verse 4 says, You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice. You will serve Him and hold fast to Him. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Amen? So, this means He will empower us to obey. And you will have all sufficiency. So He's going to bless you. Why don't you want that? Psalms 128 verse 1 to 2 says, Blessed, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who 
walk through his ways. When you eat the labor of your hand, you will be happy, and it shall be well with you. He will bless us when we obey. Amen. 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 Are we blessed? Oh, yes. Are we going to change? Oh, yes. Are we going to listen? Are we going to work? Oh, yes. Are we going to do when God says go, we're going to go? Amen. 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 So stand with me this evening. Let us pray. Let us ask God to help us to be obedient. Let us ask God for grace where we have failed, where we have, where we have doubted. Let us ask God to have mercy on you and ask Him to help you, to help you to play as He placed that heart in you, that you are able to have that desire on the inside of you to do His work irrespective of what you are facing. So I want you to join me as we pray and ask God to help us. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help me to do your will. Father God, help me to be obedient, Father, to your cause. Lord, when you tell me to go, when you tell me to lead, to move, Father God, help me, Father God, to stand strong so that I can do your will, Father God. Lord, your word says that you placed inside me your heart of flesh, Father God. Lord, your heart that desires to do your will, Father God. Lord, when I have failed you, Father God. Lord, when I have, Father God, become slack, Father God. I pray for mercy. Father God, have mercy. Lord, forgive me when I have not listened. Forgive me, Father God, when I have not done when you say to me to do something. Father God, forgive us. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, my Father. Hallelujah. Amen.